This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to another exciting episode, number 155 in the series of Hibachi Talk. I got my good old buddy, um, my, my, my new co-host, Rick hey, Stefanmeister. Great to be here and again. We, and we have Don Ariyoshi. The last name may sound somewhat familiar. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about politics. We've got Don Ariyoshi here. Um, uh, we're going to talk about bacteria in Hawaii. Staph, strep, lepto. You know, there's a, a whole bunch of things happening, and, and Don has gotten himself so involved in the community. It's a great story. So grab a chair, grab a libation, sit down, and then we'll, um, we'll talk about um, bacteria in Hawaii. But first, I'd like to give the, the viewers a little background on who you are. Other than the fact that you're the son of a former governor, which we'll get that cleared up real early. <laughs> really, and this is not a political show. Um, so a little bit of background on yourself. Yeah, so um, while I work at Morgan Stanley, um, but what I do is I try to help people and help the community. And one of the things that got involved in is bacterial awareness because my wife had an infection and so did I. Okay. And uh, she almost passed away, but she made it. Um, and I think there is a need for people to understand bacteria, how to recognize it, um, what to do, um, and share the information that they have with everybody, so there's an awareness program of bacteria because it may save a life. Yeah. So, so, and so you're, you're, you're um, and we got 28 minutes to do this show, and it's going to be hard to cover all this topic. <laughs> but you know, you you've taken it upon yourself to get out into the community and give everybody an awareness of of things like um, MRSA, um, strep, mm -hmm. the flesh-eating virus, um, lepto. I can never say that word. Leptospirosis. Leptospirosis. And so those are pretty common bacteria that, in Hawaii that many people get in contact with here. Yes. And so we're going to try in this show, give you a sense of what they are, um, what the symptoms are, and then what you need to do to prevent them. Mm -hmm. But then also, Don goes out in the community, and you, you're more than happy to go around to people all over the community and to, to talk, mm -hmm. about, talk about this. Yes. So my commitment to Hawaii in, in this bacteria awareness program is if there's any organization that wants me to come down and share the material mm -hmm. and I actually give them a handout so they can take something home and they can share it with others. Right. So I will make the time to appear in, in front of their membership and to share. I've done it with unions. I've done it with um, senior oh. groups. And I like talking to the senior groups. How about rotaries? Um, no, I haven't done a no, rotary. We need to get you to a rotary. We've had um, um, rot Rotarian individuals on this show um, start up rota rotaries too. Mm -hmm. I think that they would be an excellent. Um, mm -hmm. I'll help you with that. We okay. Can help you get okay. to the rotaries and, and things like this. Fortunately, I've never had any of these um, uh, these situations where I've got these bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, and I may have. A, we may pop up a couple of pictures. So for those of you that are a little bit queasy, I'll give you the heads up. There's a photo coming up. You might want to or not look mm -hmm. at it. So mm -hmm. let's jump right into it. So let's talk about the first one that you had um, uh, that you and I talked about. Was it MRSA? M R S A. Now, so what is MRSA? So MRSA is a bacteria that was localized in hospitals. And I think about 16 years ago in Hawaii, the, there was cases reported about 30 miles away from a medical institution. So what MRSA is, is it's a bacteria that when you cut yourself and you need a portal for it to enter into your, to your Okay, so you need skin. an opening. You need an opening, a cut. It could be a scratch on your foot. Um, and it enters into your, into your body. And it's not the most serious at the beginning and you can take care of it, antibiotics, but if you don't take care of it, then it can turn into something very serious. It could even be life-threatening. Mm. So I had, I had a MRSA in my foot um, on a baseball field is where I picked up the um, bacteria. I had a scratch on my foot. I went home, in, that was in the morning. I went home in the afternoon and I saw, um, I felt, thought I had gout. And I took my indocin and cochicins, as many of you have gout, you know that medicine. So I took three cochicins, three indocins. By midnight, something, I said, something's not right. I turned on the light and I saw a red spot the size of a quarter, like a little pimple head. And because my wife had flesh-eating bacteria about six years ago, I knew that was an infection. So I jumped in a car, went to Queens. They said, lucky you came in early, but even then I was out for about a week. Wow, so and, you know, we both worked at Queens, so yeah. we, you mm -hmm. know, we, we know that experience. So, so, God, 
I've had so many infections I've never gotten anywhere. <laughs> no, no, but but no. see, that's the, the real key because I think many of us have had infections, mm -hmm. but the important thing with MRSA mm -hmm. is that somehow we recognize this isn't just another infection or a, an insect bite or Correct. something like that. This is something entirely different, which is what was lucky for you, mm -hmm. and you caught it early. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing for you know, us and for the folks that are watching this is this is, how, how do I know that this is MRSA, that it's not, why is it different? Or are there ways to see this mm -hmm. differently yeah. and, and get on it so, like right. you did? Like, right. So like you said, so I, you know, I, think, I think it'd be slide number Three in my in in um, in the slide deck, and I gave put so many together. I'm going to give you the slide deck if you want to use it for your mm -hmm. presentations. You. But there's there's a little thing lists all the symptoms of MRSA. You know, they're right here. Um, we'll put them. We'll make them available off the website and so on. But wound does not heal. Warm and red skin. Swelling and pain in the joints. Boils and blisters and fever and nausea. Do you know how long that takes for that to start to show up? Um, MRSA can work um, pretty quickly. Um, I think the First of all, I want to say that if you have a cut, 99.99999% of the time, hydrogen peroxide and, anti and ointments will work. Yeah. Oh, We're just talking iodine. about a about small iodine? percentage. <laughs> Remember iodine yeah. as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, my wife does. As soon as I get a cut, she drops the hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that, that's smart. I think, you know, preventing and, and reacting that way, you know, helps. Um, but... You know, there's one out of 100 people, 1% 1 of the population is walking around with flesh-eating bacteria or MRSA bacteria on them. Already. But because they don't um, have an opening, they're not getting infected. Okay. That's why it's important to wash your hands, you know. But I think when you look at all the symptoms, you know, you know when you have it because there is tremendous pain, it's red, it's warm, and you may be getting a fever. So, so speaking of that, the next slide. So now I'll preface. If you're a little squeamish and you don't like looking at certain things, then you might not want to look at this. But this is a picture of a uh, MRSA virus next to a spider bite. Mm -hmm. And I've been bitten by a black spider, and I can tell you that spider bite looks so familiar. But look yeah. at that MRSA. That looks pretty gnarly. Yeah. 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 So what it does is when it bites you and it goes into your skin, it, it may not have an infection, the area where it entered, because it moves in the fat and the um, muscle tissues and it can go under the skin and end up in a totally different place where, you, where it entered your body. So the bacteria oh. itself may enter that way, but then it will become active when it gets somewhere else. Correct. And we're not doctors. We're, I'm simplifying this right. kind of thing. So when you have, like for example, if, you have, if you're diabetic and your feet are tingly and you don't have good circulation there, it may travel to areas of your foot because the antibiotic travels in your bloodstream. So it's important you know, to get that blood and, and antibiotic to around... Where the um, where the infection is, and the thing too is they don't really know. Not all antibiotics work on MRSA and flesh eating, so your infectious disease specialist has to test it, culture it, and then find that right antibiotic that's going to work. It's going to work on yeah. that. So so you don't necessarily get, necessarily get MRSA at hospitals. It can be anywhere. Correct. It's all you got it on the baseball field. Correct. Right. Wow, amazing. Okay, so that's a form of the next virus we're going to jump into, and that's the flesh-eating virus bacteria. We hear, hear a lot about that one because mm -hmm. uh, it makes the news quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one guy that fell into the Alawai. Correct. Yeah. Um, not I the Alawai, but the Bar Boat Harbor, right? right. Boat Harbor, right. Which is yeah. pretty gnarly water to begin with. Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't last very long after he came out. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been a few more in the press in, in some, a little yeah, while. from the neighbor so, islands I know have come in to us. Yeah. yeah. So what's the difference between, so, so, so the, the MRSA staff, mm -hmm. see, I feel like you, see, educate me. I love this stuff. <laughs> so MRSA is staff, and then, so now we get into, the, into uh, flesh eating virus, strep, mm -hmm. which we hear a lot of. So What's the difference? So what's the um, flesh-eating bacteria um, moves more faster. It's quick. It's really quick. And that's the one you really need to watch out for because that can, will kill you very quickly. Mm. So it's important that, and you've read people where they have, they got infected, they didn't know, their, their skin turned purplish or bluish. Um, they got really sick, and sometimes it's too late. You know, um, but... One thing about bacteria is you know you got it because there is extreme amount of pain. And when you feel pain that, don't be tantaran about it. I mean, yeah. go, you know, go. I like if, that term. If you, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you're, you think you're ill, go to the hospital because 
they have the antibiotics. They'll give you the strongest one they have then, and later on they'll figure out which one is better, better, uh, better for you. So, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't wait. You need to react quickly on, on, with flesh-eating bacteria. So is there a difference? So MRSA, like you said, you, you got it when you um, um, scraped your foot on mm -hmm. your foot at, at, at the baseball park. Mm -hmm. um, so how do I get how do I get the flesh eating one? We I talked to you earlier about the guy that fell in the alloy, but you know how did, yeah. how does that happen? It's the same way to it. it. You you get a cut, you need an opening. So in the alloy, he stepped on all the rocks, right? He had cuts in his foot, and then the bacteria okay. was in the water and it entered his system, and okay. he he went at home in his apartment and he waited. Okay. So you know, waiting that long, that 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 thing is moving. You know. So can can so can I pass? Now I'm going to get back and forth. Can MRSA be passed from person to person? Yes. Okay. Can the with, with an opening? With an opening, got to have to have it. So I have to have yeah, an opening. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. what now? What about the um, the flesh eating the strep one? Can that be passed from person to person? Yeah, you can. You can. You can wow. have that bacteria on your on, on your body. So again, it depends on on who you come in contact with. Correct. And again, if you if you have the opening, yes, th they have a way to enter into into your body. Then you've mm -hmm. given them the gateway. Yes. God, I'm in the garden all the time, and I'm hacked. Maybe yeah. I should start wearing rubber rubber gloves <laughs> in the garden. Um, well, wow. yeah, people, I think people shouldn't change their activities because when I was doing it to, uh, to the seniors, a lady was telling me, oh, I go in my yard, I'm, I'm not going to go anymore. I said, no, 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 don't, I'm not scaring, you know, I don't want to scare people. It's more just to be aware of it so you know and know what to do. So, um, you know, don't change your activities. Just know that if you do get it, you can, you recognize it and you can treat it. Right. You know? So I, 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 my, my wife has coached me up and she's a nurse mm -hmm. and, um, she said, anytime you get a cut, the peroxide here, I, just, I don't care what you're doing, you go take it, you put this on, and that's what we're going to do. And, put a, and if, you know, put a Band-Aid on it or something, but put the peroxide on it, I want to do it. Because I'm famous for not taking care of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I go, oh, oh, it's just a little bit of blood, who cares, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, off yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. So my wife had, um, on Saturday night, she wasn't feeling well, and, um, I'm sorry, Friday night, she wasn't feeling well. She went to work on Saturday. In Saturday night, she tried eating, but she couldn't hold her food down. And Saturday, about midnight, Sunday morning, one o'clock in the morning, she came to see me. She said, I can't take this anymore. The pain is too bad. So I took her to the hospital. Um, and so she had the flesh eating. It was on the move. Um, she was there for a few weeks. Um, they stuck a trachea tube down her. Um, and they told me to expect the worst, wow. which I, what does that mean, you know? And yeah. then. There were a couple of times there when she also, um, on Thursday, the doctors had a conference with me and said that she's not improving, she's now got pneumonia, and it doesn't look good, and I told them, she's going to be fine. Uh, and then Master Hong came and worked on her, and, and he did wonders on her. He's mm. from um, um, the Chi Center, and he, did, he actually, I think, with Queens and him, saved, saved my wife's life. But then later, a week later, she had meningitis, and um, not meningitis, she had a... Um, um, swelling in her brain, so they didn't know what that was. But luckily, it it didn't. It was get not any connected. Worse. Oh, was um, it connected? No, no, it wasn't connected. Wasn't connected. Mm -hmm. so, so it wasn't meningitis, but you can get meningitis when you, bacteria goes into your head. So is there, right. there there is a relationship then between MRSA and the flesh eating vi virus. There's a there's a connection point in there. Yeah, because it, if I believe if MRSA, if you don't react right away and gets worse and worse and worse, it has the same thing like like flesh-eating bacteria. Okay, wow. And it tries to shut down your organs. So what happens is when they kill the bacteria, there's something called toxic syndrome where the, bac um, the bacteria is killed, but the toxins are released in your, in your blood. Uh -huh. And that's what's trying to shut down your kidneys, your organs. Um, so when it gets to that point, I mean, you know, it's, it's really how strong you are. That's why the seniors are... You are know, kind of vulnerable. Yeah, very yeah, susceptible. Yeah. Okay, we got to yeah, believe yeah. it or not, we've burned through half of the show already. And we're actually doing pretty good, where I think, in the scheme of things. So we take a short break, then we'll come back. We'll pick up where we are here with flesh eating, and then we'll jump into the, uh, into the next, next part. Of yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I cannot say that word. It's got too many syllables in it. I can't do that. Anyway, go to the text hour. We're here with Don Ariyoshi and my uh, ever famous co host here. <laughs> Don't you spin off and create another show like my other guys have done. Rick the Fun Meister. Rick's the Fun Meister. We'll be back in a minute after we pay some bills. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. 
Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Aloha. How are you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. This is uh, Hibachi Talk, and we're talking about bacteria today, which has been pretty really a fascinating show. Don Ariyoshi, nice to have you here, and, and I appreciate your community service. It's awesome. I mean, you're taking your time out of your life to educate people on what's happening in this based on your personal experience. Mm -hmm. Rick Stefan Meister, healthcare right. expert. By far. <laughs> Maybe so anyway, we, we, took a, we took a break and we were looking at the, fr the flesh-eating bacteria, which has a relationship to, to MRSA. Um, and um, so, so let me, again, if you're squeamish, don't take a look at this photo. But we're gonna, for a couple of seconds, we're going to throw up a photo. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about the symptoms in a little bit. And then we'll drop, drop into the next one. So again, there's a photo of what... Yeah, now, you will know that you have this if you end up having um, a skin condition that looks like this hand. So this is not, this is how, how severe this can be. Yes. This bacteria is, uh, well, that, that, that young man that, that, that um, died from falling in the alawai, he did not last that long. Mm -hmm. And so it literally tore through, tore through him. And there's been a number of others, so this is why we have to be conscious of it and so on. So, again, hit us again on the, we know it, it enters through our opening, but with the symptoms of getting the flesh-eating virus are what? So the symptoms is, it's extreme pain, it's, it's red, it's warm, and you might have a fever because your body is fighting the bacteria. Okay. If you have a fever, of like a, I think it was 101.2 or 101.3, um, something's going on. Um, but that's, that's it's, it's just pain that you just can't tolerate that you know something's wrong. And like I said before, don't be taran taran about it. You got you got it. You know you got it. Go down go down and get treatment. Go to the hospital. So how do I avoid it though? I mean this, you know how do I avoid getting it? Because bacteria exists almost everywhere. Yeah. So you want to when you get a cut, you want to do hydrogen peroxide right away. You know, put ointment on it, tape it up and probably you'll be okay. Um, but a lot of times um, if you do have a flesh eating bacteria, um, then you know about it. But there are preventive things. You, for example, you want to always wash your hands. You want to wipe down surfaces, especially in hospitals. Um, that's where a lot of the, the bacteria is that can contract. Right. So, um, and also, if you use hand sanitizers, you want to use alcohol-based sanitizers. Those okay. are the ones that help okay. kill whatever you have. Now, I've always had, and we're not doctors, so again, we're not giving medical advice here. I always have this concern that we use too much of this, this um, sanitizer stuff, and the point mm -hmm. that we're... we're We've taken away our body's ability to resist things that come in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, this is my uneducated opinion yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm still alive. But I think how <laughs> I grew up as a child, it's amazing. But I mean, I, 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 I just think that, that using too much of the sanitizers can be an issue. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, this is my commentary. So, um, so, but, so I get the cut, I clean it. So that's how I, I can uh, avoid it. Um, it's not a diagnostic, right? It'll go wherever it finds an opportunity. That's correct. So, it's, so bacteria is like, it's at your door. It's ringing your doorbell. Um, but unless you open a door, it's, it can't come in, right? So that's a portal in skin where it right. enters. So the key, the key to remember is that it just can't enter through your flesh. It has to have a cut and an opportunity to go in the door. Correct. correct. Okay. And so. if it comes through the door, then pain that you know comes mm -hmm. comes upon you. all, all yeah. the things that and come with a fever pain. and yeah. all those things yeah. in a short pain. period of time fever. Correct. okay good thing right. now 
So now we're going to jump to another one, which I, I find kind of interesting. Leptospirosis. Did I get it right? Finally? You got it right. Leptospirosis. Yeah, I learned yeah. something here. So, so, so let's tell us about this. This is the third bacteria in our series of bacteria. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this one. What is this one? So leptospirosis is because you have animals in the, in the mountains that have the bacteria, they're infected, they urine in the streams, and then when we have a storm, all this runoff goes into the ocean. So when okay. the, it's kind of simple. If the water's brown, don't swim. So I'm browning, yeah. If I'm surfing yeah. in brown water, it's not the sharks I should be afraid of. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about leptospirosis, you don't need a cut. It can enter a cut, but if it goes in membranes in your nose or if you swallow the water, water. It, can, it can enter your system that way. Wow. We have 200 cases nationwide. 50% come from Hawaii. So half, 200 cases a year? A year. 200 cases a year and half are coming from Hawaii. Oh, wow. And that data was about five years ago. Okay. And what, what makes Hawaii, I guess, more prevalent? What makes it so much more prevalent in Hawaii? I think, too, the, when you look at our temperatures, our humidity, you know, we actually have a perfect condition for bacteria to grow. Uh -huh. you know, and then we have a lot of travelers yeah. that are coming here. You know, they're, they're bringing things. Um, so that's and why I think... we're in the water a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I have animals or contact with animals every other week. Um, I'm feeding the horses, you know, um, apples right out of my hand. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been running back to, the, to wash my hands after I've been feeding the, the animals, but maybe I should. <laughs> might be something I want to consider. I know it's, it's kind of like... They, they, they come down the hill and I feed them and they're slobbering all over me. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they it, I, I believe leptospirosis happens because when they urine, that's how they get it out of the system oh, okay. into the ground. So it's not necessarily their sweat glands or something that's yeah. coming from their, um, from their saliva. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, I we're not doctors. So yeah, again, so. we're just, we're, again, we're trying to, we're surmising here. This is John Q. Public. This is laypersons <laughs> talking here. Yeah, we're not by any means getting, getting advice. So, so, but what, what does, what does, what does it do? What does leptospirosis, I can see the word now, I can like, what does <laughs> leptospirosis do to you? As so, opposed to MRSA and the flesh eating. Mm -hmm. So what, um, it'll go into your system and it's one of the slower moving ones. You can have it for two or three weeks and may not have the symptoms until it pops up later, which is again, nauseous, um, uh, fever. Um, and if it's not treated, it could attack your organs and it could shut down your, your organs also. Wow. So you want to, um, but you'll, you'll know at that point, you know, that if you're at that point, I mean, you, you probably aren't walking, you're in pain, and you should have gone to the hospital earlier. Yeah, you've you already, know? you've already done. So this is the, the, the part that drives me crazy is that I see we have all these massive rainstorms, mm -hmm. right? And, and people are walking through, you know, the, the, our systems ba are backing up everywhere, yeah. mm -hmm. and people are walking through this brown water on the streets, and I'm mm -hmm. with the, in their shorts. And I'm going or s surfboarding, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. it's raining so hard. And I'm going like, there's got to be there's, this is not healthy. Yeah, it yes. cannot be. It, yeah, and like like I said, you know, Bruce, the thing is, if 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 there's rain out there and the water is brown, yeah. Stay away from They tell everybody don't go in the water, don't go surfing in brown water because the sharks can't see you. But yeah. there may be more to that shark than what we're thinking. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, I'm going to, um, so what we're going to do is like, you know, this, this picture is not going to make you feel all that bad. But here's a kind of an example of, um, of uh, what it, it could look like when you see um, leptospirosis. So we throw up that slide number, I think it was number 14. So it's not near as invasive looking, but you can see it's, there's, it's, it's working on you. Yeah, you can yeah. see that dark color in the hand. That's where um, the infection is starting to deteriorate the skin. Um, it's eating away underneath. Um, that's when it gets to that color. You you should have gone to the doctor. You've already, sorry, if you're not, if that's not being taken, yeah, you should have gone. You waited yeah, too long. Yeah. So so we come back to the signs and symptoms. Many of the signs and symptoms of these bacteria are similar. Yes. Right. Yes. There's headache or fever. Um, I heard you say nauseous, nauseous, muscle aches. You might be vomiting. Well, you could be throwing up. Okay, but uh, there's pain. There's, there's pain. There's extreme pain. What about a jaundice kind of thing, like your eyes get yellow and things like that? I mean, I, I yeah. Uh, so when my wife was in a hospital, I did notice that on her. But, mm. but that was at a point when they say that you know she may not make it. So that got, got actually gone too yeah. far. 
So, I mean, we're, these are all the kinds of things that we're seeing out there. So, okay, so here we are. We've, we've gone through all of these, these things. So now we, we'll, we'll talk to you about you know, your role and our role as citizens of this state and what we should do to, to stop this thing. I don't think we can ever stop it, but prevent it from making... Um, to recognize it and take prevention correct. quickly. Good, yes. I couldn't say that. That's why I have a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's, what's, your, what's the role? I think the role is that, well, I think the need is that everybody has known someone who was infected, mm -hmm. but that's all they did. That's all they know. They never learned about how to recognize it, how to prevent it. And so this is what I think um, I'm hoping to do with bacteria awareness. But mm -hmm. like I said, I'll talk to any organization that wants to hear me. I will go there and I'll give them the handout. So they have something to take home. But it, our role is when we learn about it to recognize it but to share it with others, because you might save a life. Right, you might save. Now, are you seeing, um, have you come into contact with any other organizations that are taking a kind of a proactive approach in this area? I mean, um, you're the most proactive person I've ever met in this area. Yeah. I, I haven't heard of um, anyone doing it, um, but I know it was needed also, because when, when I was in the hospital, I see, I see people come in with infection, you know? And um, so my wife had flesh eating and she survived. I wanted to start an awareness program, but we had no funds. So right. when I got infected with MRSA, I said something has to be done. Okay. So I, I made this uh, presentation, and I go around to the senior centers. Um, I talked to many federal retired organizations, um, go to Kailua, Waikela, wherever I need to go, I'll go. Um, but you know, for the, if, if you're a senior, I think it's important that you understand this because you are the most vulnerable. Young kids get it, they can fight it, they're strong, but a lot of seniors don't have that ability. So you want to make sure that you understand the symptoms and how to react. Um, and just be on, top, be, yeah. and be on top of it. So yeah. that, that's kind of, okay, so that's good. I mean, actually, believe it or not, I didn't think we'd get through this whole show. Um, but we did. <laughs> you know your subject well. Um, so one of the things we do give all of our guests is an autographed solo cup that's somewhere here. On the, on, the right. on the far right, so you get one one fifty five in the series, so you can put that on your on your office desk. Now I don't want to see these being sold on eBay for Bitcoin, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hang on to these. These are rare. <laughs> well, I appreciate this. One day in you know the year two thousand and ninety five, someone will find one and go, what? That's worth, <laughs> that's worth at least eighty bucks. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Don. It's, it's been awesome to have you on the show. It's thank great. You. So, and people, please, you know, pay attention to what we talked about today. This is an important subject matter. Usually, I tend to be very light, light, light on things that we do. But when you and I talked, I thought this is worth, you know, mm -hmm. spending, you know, thirty minutes on. And so, I don't mind the show giving out my phone number so people can okay, call. Give me your if phone number. Give it yeah. out. Okay. What's the number? It's it's four seven nine seven five two eight. Okay. Is my cell number. So there you go. So you got you got the number. Now don't be calling Don and asking about some political circumstances <laughs> that are going on. That's not the purpose of this thing. No. Anyway, Don, thanks a lot. And let him sleep at night. Don't yeah, let him sleep at night. Don't be calling him. <laughs> Say hi to your dad for me. By the way. <laughs> Pictures of you and your dad with me at some point in my early career. Anyway, thanks a lot, Rick. Pleasure having you here. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How are you, you doing? doing? Hopefully without Marissa. <laughs>